This lesson is again for section 14.1, Mathematical Induction, but notice that our objective is slightly different. Today we're going to be proving statements involving inequalities. So we are increasing the level of difficulty here by actually quite a lot. Um, so hopefully you have a, a solid understanding of proving formulas. Uh, those are a little bit easier than what we're going to be doing today, which is proving inequalities. So let's start here with our first uh, problem. And Notice I have the same directions here for uh, proving using mathematical induction. The concept doesn't change, and neither does the way you prove this. Uh, you're still going to start with your base case. So my base step here is to show that uh, p of 1 is true. Now, this is for n greater than or equal to 1, so I'm going to plug in here. 3 to the first is greater than or equal to 1 plus 2 times 1. And this is clearly a true statement. So I can get started now on my inductive step. And in my inductive step, I want to assume that p of k is true. And I want to show that p of k plus 1 is also true. So again, this is like my if and then statement. All right, now to keep these separate for myself, but also to be able to see them both, I'm going to write my assumption here, p of k, as 3 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus 2k. And I want to eventually manipulate that so that I get 3 to the k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus 2 times k plus 1, which if I rewrite this, clean this up a little bit, it's now just 2k plus 3. So this is what I want to eventually turn this into. All right, now, um, whenever you're dealing with exponents, I definitely think that the easier thing to do here um, is to always try to manipulate the side with the exponents to make it look, to make them match, okay? So uh, start on the left-hand side. You could try doing something with the right-hand side, but it's definitely not easier to do that. So, like, for example, some people might want to add 2 here so that they get the 2k plus 3 to match up, but um, it, it's going to become quite tricky on the, on the left hand side then. So we're going to multiply by 3. Let's do this in another color so you see what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply here by 3 and this side by 3 so that I get 3 to the k plus 1 now. So 3 to the k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3 plus 6k when I multiply that out. So now I have my left hand side here matching with this left hand side. So I'm, again, halfway there. Now here comes the tricky part. What we want to do, if we look at this right-hand side, 3 plus 6k, we want to show that 3 plus 6k is actually larger than 2k plus 3. Okay? If we can show that, then we can obviously assume that 3 to the k plus 1 should be bigger than 2k plus 3. If it's already bigger than this, and this value is less than 3 plus 6k, then I can just replace that. And that's basically like saying, hey, if I know that 4 is greater than 2, then 4 must also be greater than 1. I can replace this side with something even smaller, this 1. So that's what I'm trying to look to do. I want to replace this side with something even smaller, this 2k plus 3. So what I now have to do is actually a side proof. So in my side proof, you probably would want to show this off to the side to kind of keep this clean and neat, but I don't want to keep pulling in and out uh, of the view screen here. So my side proof is just going to be done right inside the proof here. But what I want to show is that 3 plus 6k is greater than or equal to 2k plus 3. Now remember, we can never start with a statement that we're trying to prove. Okay, so we want to show this is true so that we can replace this with this 2k plus 3. Okay, but we can't start with this statement. We need to start with something that we know to be true. Well, we know that all of our k values have to be greater than or equal to 1. And we know that this is true because that's part of our, um, our statement here is that for any n greater than or equal to 1, which means that k must be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so for k greater than or equal to 1, this is my true statement that I'm going to start with. Now, in order to get this statement to look like this, there's going to be kind of a little bit of um, work you have to do, side thinking here. Um, one, why would this be larger than this? Well, obviously the threes are the same. So 
So really, the, the major difference between this inequality on the left-hand side and this, uh, you know, on the right-hand side is that 4K has been added here. Okay, so this has an additional 4K on this side. So, in other words, we want to show that 4K is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if K is greater than or equal to 1, then K must also be just greater than 0. Okay, now I can manipulate that to look like this statement here. If I multiply by 4 on both sides, I now have 4k is greater than 0. So this is from multiplying by 4. Okay. Now that I have 4k is greater than 0, now I know that if I add 2k to both sides, so that I have 6k is greater than 2k, now I'm very close to this statement, and I simply now have to add a 3 to both sides, and I've shown that 3 plus 6k is greater than 2k plus 3. And I can also just write greater than or equal to as well, because this would also hold true as well. Um, but it's certainly greater than as well, so it's even stronger case, I suppose you can say. So here, clearly, 3 plus 6k is larger than 2k plus 3, so 2k plus 3 is smaller than this value. Because it's smaller, I can replace this small side with something even smaller, the 2k plus 3. So I have now shown, after using my side proof here, that 3 to the k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2k plus 3. This is what I was wanting to prove. I've just proved 3 to the, uh, sorry, p to the k plus 1 to be true. So therefore, for every n, p of n is true. Okay? Alright, that's your first uh, inequality proof. Now, I definitely don't think that these are easy. Um, this is going to require some really tricky thinking here just to do your side proof. That's usually where uh, students will have the most difficulty, and that's where I have the most difficulty as well. Um, your inductive step, you know, knowing what you're trying to get this to look like is not the hard part. It's, it's really trying to get from here to here that's the difficult part. So let's do another problem, and hopefully it'll clear up uh, some confusion, and then tomorrow course you'll get some some work done and, and ask questions. All right now in, in problem two we are going to show that this statement is true for all natural numbers but uh, natural numbers that are greater than or equal to 11. So this is going to uh, be slightly different than when I do my base case here okay, and this base step is going to be that uh, for n greater than or equal to 11 so 1.25 to the 11th should be greater than 11. Now you can use a calculator to verify that this is true and after using my calculator it's 11.64 something uh, greater than 11 is clearly true. Okay, so our base case is, is proven. So now I want to um, assume in my inductive step here. I just wrote assume and put left off. But never mind. Okay, so my inductive step here is to assume that p of k is true. I want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. Alright, so let's start with 1.25 to the k is greater than k. Now I want to show and manipulate this so that 1.25 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1. This is essentially what I want to show. Now I need to start with the left hand side, my if part here. So again, if you want to consider this an if and then a then, you want to start with your if and try to arrive at the then. Try to arrive here at the conclusion. So if 1.25 to the k is greater than k, I want to manipulate this. Now, like we said, like I said before in, in problem one, um, you want to change the exponent side. That's going to be the easier side to deal with. So you want to change this side to try to make it look like this side. So we're going to multiply then by a 1.25 on both sides here. So now I have 1.25 to the k plus 1 is greater than 1.25k. Now here's where my side proof is going to come in because I already have the left hand side here the same. Both sides of the left hand side are the same. And now I need to make this, uh, replace that with k plus 1. So in other words, I want to take something that is small, the small side here, and replace it with something that's even smaller. 
So now in my side proof, I need to show, so I want to show that 1.25k is greater than k plus 1. All right, now this is, again, where it gets tricky. So we want to show that 1.25 is great, k is greater than k plus 1. Well, let's take a look um, because we can't start with this statement, right? We have to arrive at this statement by starting with a true statement. Now, our true statement was for values of n greater than or equal to 11. So we do know that k should be greater than or equal to 11. Okay, so we're going to keep this in mind here. But I want to come back to this statement and, and take a look at how they're differing. Now, this, this here is claiming to be bigger because... Clearly, it's bigger by a 0.25k, right? Well, this side has a 1 over here. So in order to, to really say that this is true, then 0.25k uh, must be greater than 1. This is what we are essentially going to have to say is, is, the same, uh, is true because the rest of it is the same. In other words, if I wrote this out as 0.25k plus k is greater than k plus 1, since these are the same, I need to really show that 0.25k is greater than 1, okay? All right, so I want to start here and arrive at this. This is going to be one of my intermediate steps, though, to get there, okay? So if k is greater than or equal to 11, let's try to multiply by 0.25 on both sides. So I'm going to multiply by 0.25 here and 0.25 here, and I end up with 0.25k is greater than or equal to 2.75. All right, now here's where the weird part comes into play. So 0.25k is greater than or equal to 2.75. Remember, we want to show, we need to show that 0.25k is greater than 1. Well, doesn't this assume, right, if this is already larger, 2.75 is larger than 1. So I can replace the small side here with something even smaller. So now I can actually change that inequality sign as well to a greater than symbol and make that 1. So this is, again, I think a really tricky little nuance. You have to realize that because 2.75 is larger than 1, without having to subtract a 1.75 from both sides, you can actually just replace the right-hand side of this inequality with something that's smaller, which happens to be 1. So now I have 0.25k is greater than 1, and if I add k to both sides, I am now left with 1.25k is greater than k plus 1 which is what I was trying to prove from the beginning, right? This is what I wanted to show. So I've successfully shown that k plus 1 is smaller than 1.25k. Because it's smaller than 1.25k, then this must also hold true. Because p of k plus 1 is true, then for all natural numbers greater than then 11, greater than or equal to 11, p of n is true. So p of n is true for all n greater than or equal to 11. Okay, now I hope that uh, after seeing a second inequality proof, it's kind of coming into, uh, you're going to see kind of a pattern here, but um, they are all tricky and all very different from one another. There's no set you know, way necessarily to solve each one. There are some tricks that you can use throughout, but it's, it's going to be basically your creativity and your ability to um, kind of see some things and, and know where you're supposed to go. Um, like, for example, here, I knew that this is where I wanted to end up, um, but essentially all I really needed to show that was that 0.25k is greater than 1 because I'm looking at what they have in common and then essentially looking at what they don't have in common, the 0.25k and the 1. Um, and because I wanted to show this, I start with my base case and try to manipulate it to look like that. So I, that's why I multiplied by 0.25 on both sides. Um, and then I replace this side with something even smaller. So get in the habit of understanding that all I'm doing when I'm replacing that value here, that 2.7 uh, with that 1, is, is essentially that statement. Like 4 is greater than 1. Okay, well then 4 is greater than 0 also. This has to be true as well. Okay? All right, uh, that's enough of my jibber-jabbering. I hope you had a nice time learning uh, how to do inequality proofs. I'll see you tomorrow, and uh, make sure you ask good questions.